folks, Jeff from J. Allen Pipes here. Today I wanted to talk to you about briar, that mysterious substance from which we make pipes. When I first started making pipes, I didn't know anything about briar. I didn't know what it was, I didn't know where it came from, and I really didn't know what to do with it when it came in. And I certainly didn't know how to select it when it was put in front of me. Well today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this material that we use. Hopefully you'll learn some about how to spot flaws, about what to look for in grain structure, and whether or not there's a difference between different cuts of briar. There are two different ways that I receive briar. The first is that I hand select it when I'm either at a pipe show and meet with the briar cutter, or I have it selected for me by the briar cutter who then ships it to me where, and I receive it in my workshop. When I receive the briar in my workshop, it's usually tightly packed and comes in a cardboard box and I receive it two to three days after it's shipped from its source. The reason for doing so is that the briar is not as stable as we would like and when it's shipped long distances like that can sit in trucks that are hot or cold, the variations in temperatures can cause the blocks, which may still have some moisture inside of them, to crack and break and that renders them useless from my point of view. So after I get the briar in, whether it's coming home from a pipe show where I've hand selected it or uh, receiving it in a box from the supplier, what I'll do is first go through each and every block and mark them for its origin and the year that I received it. So you can see on a block like this that it's marked T9. This tells me that I received it in 2009 and it came from Tuscany. Um, I have a code for each of my suppliers so I know where it came from and the year that I received it. It's important for me to lay it down and let it age for a few years. Uh, the first reason for doing so is that it helps the briar to acclimate to my environment. San Diego has a unique climate, probably different from the point of origin, and so you need to let the briar stabilize, otherwise it will change um, in dimensions after I uh, work it and fit it to a pipe. So if you have a flush fitting stem, that can cause the briar to swell or shrink and make it so that it doesn't fit. I lay down the briar blocks in my workshop to age in wire mesh cages. This allows the air to flow around them and help stabilize the moisture content in the blocks. Next, let's take a look at the three different cuts of briar. Uh, as we know, briar is a burl that grows between the trunk section and the root section of a shrub that grows around the Mediterranean. It's similar to manzanita, which grows natively in California. The burl, after it's extracted from the ground, is then cut and aged. The briar cutters cut it into typically three different cuts. The first being a cross cut um, like this, the second being plateau with the live edge along um, one edge of it, and the third being a half moon. And the half moon is essentially two plateau blocks put together. Now there's no difference in smoking quality or grain quality between the cuts of briar. Any of the cuts can have wonderful grain and any of the cuts can have little or no grain. The difference really is in grain orientation. With an Ebishon or a, uh, a cross-cut block like this, we have the straight grain running sideways through the block this way and the bird's eye, bird's eye grain on the two faces on both sides. On the plateau blocks, we have the straight grain running in a fan up the sides, the two sides here, and typically on the front and bottom of the block, where the bird's eye corresponds to the dots on the plateau or the live edge on the outside where the bark of the burl would be. And then the same goes for the half moon. This represents the bird's eye. If we were to cut that off, you'd see bird's eye underneath it and the straight grain runs up the sides here. Now if the straight grain is running here, you'll have the growth rings running the opposite direction uh, corresponding to the bark or the live edge on the outside. As the burl grows outwards, it creates the growth rings. So what can we tell about a block of briar from the outside? It turns out you can tell a lot. If you spray the block of briar with water, it reveals the grain structure on the inside. You can see that some blocks of briar have very dense grain, and other blocks of briar have wide grain. Uh, sometimes it's irregular, sometimes it's very consistent. The bark section has all these little pimple-looking structures on it. 
Each one of those is a bird's eye that you would see when you cut uh, the block and sand it. So from looking at a block like this, I can see that it has very dense bird's eye grain. Well, that suggests that it also has very dense straight grain on the inside. But looking at another block of briar, such as this one, I can see that there is a section where there is dense grain, but it, then it breaks up and the, and the outside undulates and changes and there are ir irregularities. Well, that suggests that on the inside of the block, I'll see similar structure of grain. That's something important to keep in mind when you are selecting briar for your own use. So now let's talk about imperfections. Some imperfections are so small that they can be included in smooth pipes, and others are so large that they destroy even the chance at a sandblasted or textured they can pipe. Be, they can lie within the block of briar, so they are completely undetectable uh, as you're choosing uh, your briar block, or they can be seen on the outside. In some cases, they can be seen from the top of the block of briar. In many of these cases, that's an indication that there's actually a cavity that will run into the block. In other cases, you'll find little imperfections on the outside of the block. You can see sand pits uh, or tiny cavities here, or in other cases, you can see um, imperfections that run with the grain in the block. And then finally, there's another type of imperfection that is more a problem with cutting than it is with the structure of the briar itself. You can see where the grain washes out. That's actually the center of the block, and for some reason the cutter has chosen to include this. Typically in this kind of a case, I would either not choose the block or I'll cut around it. That's the case too for the other imperfections. You can cut around them and hope that you can find a block or find a pipe within the block excluding those areas. It inspires you to be creative and try to find your way to use a block of briar that you've paid good money for, um, but that might be otherwise useless um, if you didn't find your way around those imperfections. Well, thanks for tuning in. I hope that you found this video informative and that you learned something that you didn't know before about briar. As always, hit me up in the comments with any questions or clarifications you might have, or if you have suggestions for future episodes. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.